in my book, Game Changer, the $1,000 emergency fund is one of those game changers in your life that can really make a big difference um, in your family. I've seen it in people that come into the bank where they, they didn't know where to start with budgeting. They didn't know where to start with, with saving. We went over that and it really made a huge difference in uh, their family. Welcome to Personal Finance Cat, where I share my personal take on personal finance. Hey, Tom, welcome to the show. How are you? Thank you. I'm doing great. It's good to be here. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for the time. To start with, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? I know you're a personal finance podcaster like myself. Can you tell us your yeah. job and what you do? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, I've been um, and actually in the mortgage credit um, banking industry for well over 25 years. Um, that's kind of really how I, I got my uh, interest in well, the podcasting story is interesting in itself, but that's really how I um, how I got my you know my my start in um, in the finance world uh, that way. So doing mortgages for about twenty two years was uh, was quite a ride, actually. So yeah, yeah, I'm sure. You said that you had decades of experience, right? Is it forty years? Did I read that right? No, I've I've got uh, twenty five years of banking. Okay. mortgage and credit. I've got four, 40 years in sales. I mean, I've been in sales all my life, but um, yeah, that much time in the, in the, uh, in the banking and, and mortgage credit industries. Yes. And they call all, all kind of go hand in hand, but yes. Right. So what's your current role? Are you still working in that industry? I'm not actually, um, I got out of uh, banking about a year and a half ago, uh, delved in a little bit of real estate. So I've been doing that for yeah. a little bit. Um, the top of my podcasting, uh, as well as I just finished my, my first book. Um, yeah. So uh, a little bit of everything. Um, and that's how I've been kind of supporting myself. Yeah. Cool. And I think you started your podcast a couple of years ago, right? I did June of 2000. Yes. Nice. Nice. I kind of noticed that your topics range widely. Personal finance is definitely the theme. There are inspirational contents there as well. Can you talk about how you started this podcast and what is your ultimate goal? Yeah, absolutely. It's kind of a it's kind of a cool story. It happened by accident, actually. Um, when I was in when I was working at a regional bank, um, I was sending out some emails to my clients for a uh, for an equity line promotion, um, and I had a gentleman that responded back to me pretty negatively, actually. Um, saying, you know, asking me why underwriting takes so long and why we charge so many fees. And, and I just responded back to all his questions. And we started this email conversation, actually email relationship back, back and forth for about, a, about two or three weeks. Um, then this gentleman came in one day and he sat down in my, in my office. I didn't know who he was, had no idea. And he goes, Hey, Tom, how you doing? I'm your, I'm your, uh, I'm your email friend, Bob. And I thought, Bob, okay. Oh, okay. Bob. Yeah. Okay. I know who you are. Um, he goes, yeah, I just want to come in and say thank you so much for answering all my questions and, and being so kind to me as I was doing that because I've dealt with a lot of other um, financial experts, bankers and so forth that really wouldn't give me the time of day. So I just wanted to help him out. And, you know, we, we began talking again and he said, well, what I really think you should do is start a blog. And I thought, well, I don't really have time to start a blog. So I was thinking, okay, well, Bob, you know, sure, I'll, 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 uh, I'll um, go ahead and I'll start a blog. I'll look it into it. And um, I told him, I'll tell you what, I'll make you a deal. I'll send you some subjects um, via um, voice clip on my phone. So that's what I did for about two or three weeks. I just sent him voice clips of some different topics and things that I would talk about. And he showed up in my office again and said, well, you don't need to start a blog. You need to start a podcast. And at that time, I really didn't know anything about podcasting or how to start one, um, but it kind of intrigued me. Um, so I started um, doing some research, how to start it. And I actually, I started it kind of uh, really, um, uh, what do you call it, kind of in a way that probably not a lot of people would do, which is just on my phone. Um, I was in my car looking for some bumper music and I would, you know, fade the music in and fade the music out at the end of the episodes and so forth. So it was actually really bad uh, in that source. But um, that I really liked, and I enjoyed talking about the subjects that I did because it was something I did every day with my clients anyway. Um, it's kind of a passion that I had to help people. Um, so as the podcast grew, the, um, the music got better, the format got better. I got some uh, really good guests on there. Um, and it's just something that I fell in love with doing. So I really enjoyed doing the podcast aspect of it. That's cool. Can you talk about maybe the most interesting topics that you had on your podcast to this point? Yeah, sure. sure. I, I think one of, the mo one of the ones that got the most views probably, the most listens, um, the one that I got most feedback on was the emergency fund. 
um, what you need to do, what an individual family needs to do to, to uh, save for an emergency fund, what that's used for, what it's not used for. Um, that's the one that really probably had the most impact on people. Um, the next episode after that was probably the one where people sent in questions for me and I answered their questions. That got a lot of popularity as well. So, um, but I think that in my book, Game Changer, the thousand dollar emergency fund is one of those game changers in your life that can really make a big difference um, in your family. I've seen it in people that come into the bank um, where they they didn't know where to start with budgeting. They didn't know where to start with, with saving. We went over that and it really made a huge difference in uh, their family. Yeah, so that's what I, I want to have an impact on people's lives. That's what it's all about. Great. So where did you get your inspirations to come up with different topics? Is it from your interactions with your clients, the questions they ask? That's mm -hmm. how you got the topics? Yeah, I would say so. Um, I, yeah, and I just just doing research on, on I would actually go into Google or, or Yahoo and type in, uh, you know, top financial uh, questions, top financial subjects. I don't really delve into... Um, investing at all. I'm not a licensed investor. I'm not a financial advisor. Um, but just topics that I coach my client, you know, my clients on when I was doing in the banking industry, as well as in mortgage, um, how to read a credit report, um, how to say, you know, how to build credit, uh, how to repair your credit, those type of subjects is just something that came natural, naturally to me. Got it. Let's go back a little bit and talk about your mm -hmm. professional experience, because it sounds like that had a lot of influence on your podcasting journey. So can you talk more about exactly what you did? Was it wealth financial advice? Because you said mm -hmm. banking industry, that can mean a lot of different things. Yeah, absolutely. I was a personal banker. So we, I dealt with um, people's debt. Uh, I did loans for people, uh, mortgage, equity, credit cards. Um, what one thing that I did do that a lot of people didn't as a banker is I, I went over budgets with people. I helped them set up their own home budgets to be able to, be able to um, figure out where they're at financially because a lot of people just they come in and they're overdrawn and that happens week after week and what so, so what do you what am i supposed to do about it as a banker i have a responsibility to that person to to share my knowledge and to um help them out individually um, with their finances that's really where, where it came from as a passion for me gotcha you mentioned earlier that when you started it was just recording in the car with the music how has it involved and what's your current process of recording your podcast yeah, I have some uh, some equipment, not a studio, but I have some equipment, a microphone. Um, I use Audacity, which is a, a free software program on online. Um, I've been a musician for years, so I know how to do mixing and all that stuff, um, as well as, uh, um, you know, I'm trying to build that up. I want to get the podcaster um, uh, piece of equipment. I don't know if you've heard of that or not, but um, I've tried that out. It seems like it's a pretty cool piece of equipment. Um, but I used, honestly, I use a, a really expensive lapel mic on my, on my iPhone because, you know, I'll be somewhere and I want to be recording and I'll have to put it on the phone um, or recording somewhere. So, cause I'm not always in the studio. And maybe let's talk about how you manage your schedule. Cause you mentioned in one of the communications that we had that you have four kids and sound like you still have a job and now you're doing the podcasting thing as well. How do you manage your schedule and how do you prioritize? I don't even know. No, I, I have a really, it's getting up early, early in the morning. It's just a matter of finding time that I have by myself, which is usually in the morning. That's when I would uh, have the time to write my book, which is around, you know, four thirty, five o'clock in the morning. Um, and whenever I can, whenever I can, whenever I can get a getaway and, and, um, and work on it, that's, it, it is hard. Um, but I try and prioritize the time, at least block it out every week so that I know exactly what I need to do for not just my podcast, but my writing as well. Gotcha. I think you mentioned that maybe you you were gonna start a blog, but maybe it was replaced. I don't with... have a blog. No, okay. no, I do not have a blog. Um, yeah, I didn't start a blog. I just don't have the time to write one. Um, that's why I started the podcast. It was really, and I mean, who who knows in the future? I I might that might be something I might add to the website. But as for now, I know I do not have an active blog. Okay. So the writing that you were referring to was just for the book. Correct. And I'm starting on the second book as we speak. So that's in the works. Cool, cool. So what's your plan for the future? You're doing the podcast, you're writing books. What is your ultimate goal? Um, ultimate, yeah, that's a great question. I mean, I like to con continue to evolve the podcast, um, get more guests on there that are a little bit more, uh, have more knowledge than I do. Um, it seems that the ones that with the interviews are, are pretty popular. Um, and to just, you know, to, to grow that, um, grow the website, continue to write my books. Also, I'm, I'm even interested in starting a coaching company. 
um, to become, you know, to uh, offer financial coaching to those that need it. I think that's going to be an industry that's, it's not only growing right now, um, but I, I think it's going to be needed more than ever in the future. And I'm not just talking about financial advisors. I'm talking about uh, folks that can help guide people in their everyday budgeting, um, goal setting, and those uh, those things that are going to actually make a big difference in their own personal financial life. Yeah, that sounds great. So let's talk about that a bit more because I think that's a very mm-hmm. interesting topic. What do you think is causing people sort of lack the financial education to be able to manage personal finances? Because you hear of these stories of people couldn't retire or they work multiple jobs just to survive. How can people learn more about personal finance and then be able to get farther in life? Yeah, that, that's, that's a great question because, um, I mean, I, all I can do is talk about what my experience was with my clients at the bank and all the information, I'm sure that you're, you're aware of all the information on the internet um, at, the, you know, at our fingertips. It just seems like there's an information overload. And I think that people, really people that are dealing with their own finances maybe are scared. Um, they're fearful. They don't want to share it. They don't want to, if they have an issue with, uh, maybe they're not bringing in enough money or they have too much debt. I think people are just prideful and they don't want to share that information. Um, so they're not willing to reach out and, um, and get help. Uh, I think that's a lot of it. And I've heard that from a lot of different people. Um, so as, as far as that goes, I think it goes back to the way we raise our children. Um, there's only seven states in the whole United States that, that mandate any type of financial education for children in schools. I think it's got to start there in the home as well. So, you know, if our parents, if the parents are not educated enough about finances and about money, um, I, their kids are not going to be, obviously. So I, I just, I think there's, there's got to just one, one person by one person. I think there's got to be um, a push out there to, to not shame people. I know there's a lot of um, financial advisors and gurus out there. I don't think we need to name them, but that use shame as, a, as part of it. Uh, that tell you that you're an idiot or you're a loser because you're doing this or that. I think people need to be coached. They need to be encouraged. Um, and they just need to be shown, shown the way. And it's going to be totally, you know, completely up to them whether or not they want to follow that. But um, I, I think that it starts there. Cool. Speaking of the gurus, right? I think you mentioned <laughs> there are a lot of them out there. So how do people sift through all of these gurus and find the right one for themselves? that that's a, that's a great question um the way that i did it myself i just started researching stuff on my own um and you've, you've really got to that's a great question i'm not even sure how to answer that um sit here and think about that i you need to i think you need to find somebody that's going to help you that's going to be honest with you um and, and uh it, like i said it's going to encourage you and be there and um and, and coach you on the best way to do to be whatever your situation is, because this is not a cookie cutter type of thing. Uh, everybody's situation is different. Um, so that's something I have to think about. I really haven't thought about that, that question, but that's a good one. Yep. So maybe let's talk about your books a little bit. Can you mm-hmm. maybe walk us through what your first book is focused on and how it can help people? Yeah, absolutely. Um, g- g- it's just called Game Changer. Um, and I really didn't come up with the name until about halfway through the book, but it talks about um, some specific things that you need to put in your life that could be game changers in your life, whether you do all of them or, or one of them or three of them. But one of them is, um, is uh, doing a, f- a financial forensic audit on your life, uh, knowing exactly where you're at as far as your credit, um, what you've got coming into your home, what you've got going out. Uh, that would be a budget. Um, budgeting, uh, goal setting is another game changer that could that changed my life dramatically years ago when I started to when I found out how to actually set goals. Um, it really helped my family and myself. Uh, another one is debt. You know the right way to do debt reduction um, to do uh, to save. You know for your emergency fund. I think that's that's huge. There's only uh, only about um, was it four out of ten people right now are actually ready for a four hundred dollar emergency that are prepared for that can actually handle that. That's not a, that's not very good odds. <laughs> uh, so, te- you know, getting people to, um, to show people at that, how important that is, what they can do to, you know, in their life and relieve their stress. That's huge. That's another game changer. So I go over each of these topics uh, at the end, I kind of sum it, you know, sum it all together and give you, um, give you the exact step-by-step 
approach of what to do um, and then uh, sum it up from there. So it's really a kind of a guide on how to uh, how to better yourself financially. Very cool. What's the process of writing this book? Did you use your own experience or interactions with your clients or research? Can you talk about that? All of it. Uh, all, of all of it. it. Yeah. I yeah. share a lot of personal stories in there. Um, there. There's some stories about some of my clients that I had, of course, their names are, are not mentioned. Um, and, and just some, some of the research that I did. Uh, but most of it is heavily based off of personal experience and that with my clients. Gotcha. Are there some helpful hacks or tips that can be shared on this show if you're comfortable? Uh, as far as, as far as what, how, how to, it can be any area, like for example, budgeting or increasing your credit score or save up the emergency fund, things like that. Yeah. Yeah. I can do that. I think I'll, and I'll change it around a little bit. I'll, mindset is huge. So, um, you know, either you're going to, I think one a person's got to be set in their mind for me personally, it was, I've had enough. I'm tired of living the way I'm living enough is enough and I'm ready to make a change. And until somebody comes up with that mindset until you're ready to make a change for yourself, because it's not going to be your spouse. It's not going to be your kids. It won't be your mom and dad. It's got to be you. You've got to want to change you. Um, and until that happens, nothing's going to happen. So you've got to come to a play. And I talk about this in the book. You've got to come to a place that you're not, you're not um, okay with your status quo. You want to make some changes for the better. Um, you know, and change is hard. People don't like change. Uh, it downright sucks sometimes. It's uh, it's uncomfortable. But if you want to put yourself in a better situation, you've got to be willing to make that change. Um, and a lot of my clients that I've dealt with over the years, some of them wanted to make change and some of them didn't. And those that did were in the same situation probably now that they were in 10 years ago. So it all, all starts with mindset and your desire to want to better yourself and better your family. Cool. So is it fair to say that that change happened about 10 years ago when you started the podcast or way earlier than that? Um, it was a little bit earlier than that. It was probably when I first got into, into banking. Um, I mean, when I was in mortgage, I, I knew a lot about credit. Um, I gained knowledge about credit. I, I mean, I, I would review thousands of credit reports a year. So, you know, naturally I knew how to go and look at a credit report. And I could tell you what you need to work on, but it wasn't until I really got into uh, as a personal banker that I really begin to understand how people's thought process was around money, um, what it was that made the person that had the savings in the bank versus the person that did not have the savings in the bank. And it was always pretty much the same indicators with every, with everybody. Um, you know, those that save, they, they had a plan. Those that lived on the edge or lived day by day, they didn't, they were, they didn't have a lot of money in the bank. And most of the time they were over either overdrawn or, or, um, didn't have hardly anything. So, uh, you know, it's just, uh, I got a chance to, to look at both sides of it. And like I said, recently, really when I got into banking, that's when I, when I really started to understand um, about personal finance. Got it. Can you talk about the major changes you made since that point? I'm assuming that it comes on both sides, right? Increasing your income, yeah. increasing your expenses, saving more, etc. Can you talk about maybe the major changes that helped you? Yeah. I get getting out of credit card debt. That was huge. Yeah. That was probably the, the biggest thing. Um, putting money in savings so that I didn't have to worry. I'll give you an example. Last week, the battery went out in my car. That was uh, 300 bucks. And more people than not don't have 300 bucks. They can pull out of their savings account and buy a battery for their car. So what do they do? They go into panic mode. And Cause I knew I did this before I've done it. Uh, they go into panic mode. They pull all their credit cards out of their purse or out of their wallet lay them on the kitchen table and they start calling the backs of the cards to find out how much credit they have left. So they could put that battery or whatever it is that they have that broke down onto those credit cards. That's, that's not the way to live. Mm -hmm. um, that just causes stress. It's, it's, it's not, it's not good for yourself. It's not good for your family. Uh, so we, you know, having an emergency fund and savings account, and I talk about a thousand dollars, but you really should have, you know, three months worth of expenses saved up in a liquid account. Um, but what that does is it makes it, you know, makes an emergency inconvenience. So now you're out 300 bucks in your emergency fund. You just need to replenish it rather than having to worry about putting it on credit. So besides the podcast, do you have other social media presence? I think I was able to find a Facebook page, but it doesn't mm -hmm. seem like I was able to find a website or Instagram or any other. I don't have Instagram. Okay. Um, I did have a website. It's under construction right now. Um, 
So I, there is some upgrades I'm doing to a pay, Patreon and so forth. Um, I did just come out with the book that's going to be on there. So yeah, I'm upgrading my website. Um, I do have a Facebook presence. You're absolutely right. I'm going to be doing some TikTok stuff here shortly. Um, I do. I, I am on um, LinkedIn. That's another area that I, I do talk with people quite a bit. Um, and that's those are the really the social media presence that I have at the moment. I, I'm looking forward to my website getting back up because that was something easy people could find and, and get the information they need. Thank you.